to the ancient Egyptians, death was not the end of life, but only the beginning of the next phase in the individual's eternal journey. There was no word in ancient Egyptian language which corresponds to the concept of death as usually defined as ceasing to live, since death was simply a transition to another phase of one's eternal existence. The attitude of ancient Egyptians towards death was influenced by their belief in immortality. To ensure the continuity of life after death, people paid homage to the gods, both during and after their life on earth. When they died, they were mummified, so the soul would return to the body, giving it breath and life. Household equipment and food and drink were placed on offering tables outside the tomb's burial chamber to provide for the person's needs in the afterworld. Written funerary texts consisting of spells or prayers were also included to assist the dead on their way to the afterworld. The rituals concerning mourning the dead never dramatically changed in all of Egypt's history and are very similar to how people react to death today. One might think that knowing their loved one was on a journey to eternal happiness or living in paradise would have made the ancient Egyptians feel more at peace with death. But this is clearly not so. In inscriptions mourning the death of a beloved wife or husband or a child, all express the grief of loss, how they miss the one who has died, how they hope to see them again someday in paradise, but do not express the wish to die and join them anytime soon. There are texts which express a wish to die but this is to end the sufferings of one's present life, not to exchange one's mortal existence for the hope of eternal paradise. The prevailing sentiment among these ancient Egyptian texts, in fact, is perfectly summed up by Hamlet in Shakespeare's famous play, The Undiscovered Country, from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. The Egyptians loved life, celebrated it throughout the year, and were in no hurry to leave it, even for the kind of paradise the religion promised. Death is before me today, like a man is yearning to see his home, after passing many years in exile. A debate between a man and his soul is a masterpiece of ancient Egyptian literature, known as wisdom literature. It is also called a dispute over suicide, or the man who is weary of life. This literary work focuses on the subject of suicide, and it tries to give an answer to the bewildering question, should a man whose miseries are unbearable commit suicide? But at no point does he seem to think he will find a better existence on the other world. He simply wants to end the misery which he is feeling at the moment. To prepare the dead for the journey to the afterworld, the opening of the mouth ceremony was performed on the mummy and the mummy case by priests. This elaborate ritual involved purification, burning incense, anointing, and incantations, as well as touching the mummy with ritual objects to restore the senses, the ability to speak, touch, see, smell, and hear. The opening of the Mao ceremony dates back to at least the Pyramid Age.
The journey to the afterworld was considered full of danger. Traveling on a solar bark, the mummy passed through the underworld, which was inhabited by serpents armed with long knives, fiery spitting dragons, and reptiles with five ravenous heads. Upon arriving in the realm of the Duat, land of the gods, the deceased had to pass through seven gates, reciting accurately a magic spell at each stop. If successful, they arrived at the Hall of Osiris, the place of judgment. To the ancient Egyptians, the judgment of the dead was the process that allowed the Egyptian gods to judge the worthiness of the souls. Deeply rooted in the Egyptian belief of immortality, judgment was one of the most important parts of the journey through the afterlife. Many variations of judgment scenes appear in the Egyptian afterlife texts. Each soul that entered the afterlife was handled individually during judgment. Once the deceased finished their journey through the underworld, they arrived at the Hall of Ma'at, Goddess of Justice. Here, their purity would be the determining factor in whether they would be allowed to enter the kingdom of Osiris. The deceased's first task was to correctly address each of the 42 assessors of Ma'at by name, while reciting the sins they did not commit during their lifetime. This process allowed the dead to demonstrate that they knew each of the judges' names and established that they were pure and free of sin. After confirming that they were sinless, the deceased was presented with the balance that was used to weigh the heart against the feather of Ma'at. Anubis was the god of unseen administrating this test. If the deceased's heart balanced with the feather of Ma'at, Thoth, the god of learning and reckoning, would record the result and they would be presented to Osiris, who admitted them into the Sikhet Aru, the ancient Egyptian paradise. However, if their heart was heavier than the feather, it was to be devoured by Amet, goddess of divine retribution, permanently destroying the soul of the deceased. Sikhet Aru, the field of reeds, was the final destination for all souls who had been granted rebirth. This concept evolved in the 5th dynasty. Sikhet Aru was essentially thought to be a marvelous paradise. The field of reeds was visualized as a very lush region filled with waterfalls and other natural wonders. This paradise is divided into separate islands where travel by boat is necessary. Those who were granted access to the field of reeds included both gods and righteous souls.